Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. If you'll remember, a few months ago um, I made a video about the conversion of potassium chloride into potassium chlorate by electrolysis, in which we electrolyzed a solution of potassium chloride with inert electrodes uh, at around 3 amps for around 2 weeks. Um, and eventually we were able to get some potassium chlorate to crystallize out of solution. In that video, I said that the conversion of sodium chloride into sodium chlorate is much the same as the process for converting the potassium salt. And I said that if there was enough interest uh, on the last video, uh, we would give it a go with the sodium salt, uh, which we are doing today. If you don't remember uh, my video on the potassium chlorate cell or you haven't watched it uh, you should go and have a look at that now uh, because that video goes a lot more into the chemistry behind the chlorate cell uh, whereas this video is just going to be going over the process of making sodium chlorate um, not really explaining the chemistry um, it's going to be pretty much exactly like the potassium chlorate video uh, but we are going to have some very minor changes to the process to start as per the last video, uh, we're going to use the exact same cell that we used for the potassium. I have a pair of inert electrodes here. You can see we have an MMO, mixed metal oxide anode, which is a mixture of ruthenium dioxide and iridium dioxide on a titanium substrate. And for the cathode, uh, we just have bare titanium mesh. Um, I've positioned these a centimetre or two apart and they will dip into our cell jar like that that will be sealed and we can electrolyze our solution of sodium chloride to convert it into sodium chlorate. For our starting material of sodium chloride, uh, this is obviously very easy to get pretty much anywhere. Uh, it's just table salt. Um, specifically, you don't want uh, just generic table salt because that's generally um, got some sodium iodate, I believe, in it, which may, well, it wouldn't really interfere with the process, but um, it's good to keep our sodium chloride starting material as pure as possible. So the best thing to go for generally is cooking salt because that's the purest form you can get. I think it's also sometimes called kosher salt or something like that. Um, this contains no iodine content and also um, I think contains fewer anti-caking agents which would just be a source of impurity in our process here. Now what I want our cell to do, uh, this is around 400 milliliters in this chlorate cell that we're going to build. Um, I want to convert around 220 grams of sodium chloride into 400 grams of sodium chlorate. So what I've done is I have got 250 grams of sodium chloride. Uh, it's a slight excess because we want a little bit of excess chloride in the cell uh, to prevent our electrodes from degrading. Um, and I have dissolved as much of it as I can in 400 milliliters of water ready to be put into the cell. A fair portion of the sodium chloride didn't actually dissolve into our 400 milliliters of solution. And in this case, um, contrary to what uh, we had for the potassium chlorate cell, um, that's actually okay for the sodium process. Because as we electrolyze our solution and convert the sodium chloride into sodium chlorate, more and more sodium chloride will keep on dissolving into solution. And I've worked it out such that all of this sodium chloride will actually dissolve into solution before any sodium chlorate will crystallize out. We can't do this for a potassium cell because potassium chlorate is significantly less soluble than potassium chloride. So what happens if you try to do uh, what we're doing here with a potassium chlorate cell is you get potassium chlorate crystallizing out before all of your potassium chloride has dissolved and all the potassium chlorate crystals prevent the potassium chloride from actually being able to dissolve into solution. They kind of cover them and prevent them from touching the actual liquid. Sodium chloride, however, is significantly more soluble than sodium chloride. So in this case, uh, we can actually do this. So to start the cell, easy as, we're just gonna add our sodium chloride solution along with our undissolved sodium chloride as well. And with that, I'll put our electrodes in. I've also prepared a small solution of sodium hydroxide along with a gas outlet tube for the chlorine and hydrogen that will be produced. We will lead our gas output through our solution of sodium hydroxide and that will serve to scrub any of the chlorine gas that comes out of our cell. So putting our electrodes in. Now with the electrodes in there, you can see that the sodium chloride does cover the electrodes uh, somewhat, but 
this really isn't a problem because I'm planning on running the cell at around 4 amps, uh, whereas these electrodes can happily handle uh, around 10 amps, I think. So the small surface area of um, the electrodes that we lose at the beginning of running the cell uh, really shouldn't matter all that much given we're running it at a low current. And now finally, turning the cell on, we should see a small amount of gas being generated on the electrodes. It's not showing up very well on camera, but I will turn the current up. There we are, that's approaching 2 amps. You can see a whole bunch of hydrogen being generated on the cathode. Um, that is our negative electrode, the titanium. And maybe if we turn it around a little bit, you can see on the anode over here, there's a little bit of chlorine being generated. As we can see, our gas scrubber is working as intended. I've sealed the cell correctly. Um, we are venting all of our gases. Currently, hydrogen, chlorine, and a little bit of oxygen through our solution of sodium hydroxide. Uh, our voltage and current is around 3.82 volts and around two amps. I am going to run it, I think, at 4.2 amps uh, for around 18 days. Uh, that should give us our desired 400 grams of sodium chloride in solution. So we'll turn that up now. Alrighty, around 4.85, 4.8 volts and 4.2 amps. We can see the cell is still running nicely. Uh, we have a whole bunch more gas generation and our cell is completely opaque. So what I'm going to do is monitor this for an hour or two, make sure nothing gets too hot. We don't want the cell to get too hot because that's bad for our electrodes and we definitely don't want our connections getting too hot. You'll probably notice that I didn't add um, any additives to the cell uh, that make it more efficient. Um, there is dichromate salts, so sodium dichromate we could add to the cell just in a catalytic amount or sodium persulfate as well can be added um, to increase the efficiency of the cell. Um, I haven't done that simply because this is so much simpler. Um, I don't want to put too much effort into building an efficient chlorate cell. The estimated 50% Faradaic efficiency um, of the process is enough for me, pretty much. Again, if you're interested in the chemistry as to what's actually going on here, or you want to know why I've built the cell the way I have, uh, you should go and check out the potassium chlorate cell video that I made a few months ago. And so after having closely watched this cell for quite a while, um, the cell hasn't heated up too much. I mean, there's only around 20 watts of power going into the cell, so that's not too much to make it overheat. Um, our connections are staying cool, so that's good too. But that's about it as far as setting up the cell goes. So what we'll do now is just cut forward to a later date. 16 days it has now been since I started running the cell. Um, I didn't film any of it, but things got quite complicated in the middle there. Um, what basically happened was before all of the sodium chloride dissolved into solution, um, unexpectedly the sodium chlorate uh, started to crystallize out, which I wasn't expecting. Um, I thought I was being really cool and calculated everything using solubility products um, to see when all of the sodium chloride would dissolve and when all of the sodium chlorate would start crystallizing, but apparently I must have got my calculations wrong, or maybe my theoretical calculations just don't apply under these physical conditions. Either way, about 10 days into running the cell, um, things were crystallizing out and starting to fill the cell with sodium chlorate crystals while there were still sodium chloride crystals on the bottom of the cell. Um, so to make sure everything dissolved, I had to pour out about 150 milliliters of the cell um, into this beaker here, which I've stored off to the side. And then what I did is just added an extra 150 milliliters of distilled water to the cell and that seemed to get everything all dissolved. Over time I periodically switched between uh, the solution that was in our cell and the solution that was in our beaker over here in order to ensure that we were electrolyzing all of the chloride content that we started with. And you can see over time uh, in our external beaker we have actually crystallized quite a bit of chlorate which is very promising. Um, there should be quite a bit more in solution, which we will eventually get out. Additionally, final thing to note is that the cell lid has started leaking just a little bit. You can see a whole bunch of crystallized chloride and chlorate on the lid of the cell there. It's not particularly significant at this stage, but I think it's about the end of the road for this cell. I think I'm going to have to take it apart after we finish this run. 
Now we were planning on having this cell running for 18 days total in order to get 400 grams of sodium chlorate at our predicted cell efficiency. We have only had it running for 16 days but I've decided to stop the cell here because our power supply, I don't know if you can read that there, um, initially we started out with a voltage of around 4.1 volts and a current of around 4.2 amps um, but the voltage has now risen uh, slightly to four and a half volts and the current has fallen to three and a half amps um, so that tells us that possibly the chloride levels in our solution are dropping and it's a warning sign that we should stop very soon because if we run it for much longer it's likely that our anode will start to fall apart and stop working so what's very likely to have happened is that the cell is probably slightly more efficient than we were expecting and we finished the run uh, slightly earlier than we were expecting but the time has come. Um, I'm going to turn the cell off right now. Um, we're going to take the cell apart, probably dismantle the lid and take our electrodes from that uh, so we can use them for other things. And then we're going to get to extracting our sodium chlorate product. Right, everything's disassembled. First of all, uh, the electrodes look perfectly fine. They look exactly as they did when we started out running the cell. That's the MMO anode and that is the titanium cathode. So I'll take those out of the lid a bit later and use them for something else. Uh, the tubing uh, that we had our chlorine and hydrogen running through, I mean that held up pretty well. And then this is our solution from the cell. Um, it's looking a little bit green because um, we have produced some degree of sodium hypochlorite. Um, I'm just going to add all of this solution to our beaker that we've put everything into so far. Now after finishing running the cell, we are left with approximately 550 milliliters total of very concentrated sodium chlorate solution. In fact, as you can see down the bottom here, um, a whole bunch of sodium chlorate has crystallized out, which is very promising. Now we could probably just extract all of the chlorate that's already crystallized. It's probably pure enough for pretty much anything you're going to use it for, uh, but we're going to take it a step further. What we're first going to do is dissolve everything up. Um, so that should be easy. Heating up the solution, uh, the solubility of sodium chlorate increases drastically. Uh, so that should all dissolve, no worries. We're going to do a hot filtration. And then what we're going to do is boil down the solution, maybe to 300 milliliters. And that will allow um, a whole bunch more sodium chlorate to crystallize out upon cooling. You'll notice that the process of crystallizing out our sodium chlorate product is actually quite different to the process of crystallizing out our potassium product from our previous video on chlorate cells. In this case we have to remove most of the water to get most of our sodium chlorate to crystallize out, whereas with the potassium salt we actually had to add a lot of water in order to get it all dissolved up and then crystallize out nicely. Anyway, as I said, first thing to do is to get everything dissolved up, so I'll put that on the hot plate and start heating. And there we go, everything has heated up. We've dissolved everything into solution. So our next step is to filter it, because as you can see, uh, the solution is slightly turbid and there's a few little bits in there. We can't use regular paper or any kind of filtering paper uh, for filtering this kind of solution uh, because it's full of chlorate and hypochlorite, which will simply eat right through most forms of paper. So instead of using filter paper, uh, what I've done here is I've just plugged uh, the bottom of this funnel with a small piece of fiberglass cloth which shouldn't work very well as a filter uh, but it should get rid of the small amount of particles that we do have in our solution there. Hopefully this works. And our final step, of course, as I said before, is to boil everything down uh, just a little bit. We're aiming for around 300, 350 milliliters. That's somewhat of an arbitrary volume, but I think that's good for the amount of chlorate that we have made, probably. Additionally, this will serve to convert um, any of the sodium hypochlorite that's still in solution into our desired product, uh, the sodium chlorate. So we're squeezing out a little bit of extra yield by doing this too. Now you're probably wondering why we aren't just boiling this down as far as we can and getting it to the point where the sodium chlorate actually starts to crystallize out of solution due to the low volume. Um, the reason we're not going all that way is because when we're working with something that's got a steep solubility curve uh, like sodium chlorate, if we boiled it down to say 
250 milliliters, which we probably could without anything crystallizing out. Um, once we cool down the solution, generally um, the amount of crystals that we get, or the volume of crystals, would actually be comparable to the volume of solution that we had. So it would be very difficult to separate the crystals from the leftover solution. Um, if we start with a larger volume, like 350, 375 milliliters, as we have now, um, it's much easier to decant off um, our leftover solution after crystallization. Anyway, we're just about ready to start cooling it down and crystallizing out our product. So I'm going to turn this off and pour everything into another beaker. After allowing the solution to cool, um, you can see we have a significant quantity uh, of sodium chlorate crystals uh, in our beaker. I didn't really want this whole quantity to crystallize out all in one go. Um, I was saying before that if we have all of this crystallizing out at once, um, it does trap quite a significant quantity of um, our actual solution, which isn't ideal because that'll trap some of the chloride that we don't actually want to extract. Uh, but I think we can probably work with this. I will first decant the top layer of water and then maybe try to uh, drain the solution from the rest of the crystals. Maybe I'll have to filter it um, and then I'll possibly have to wash it with a bit of ice cold water. After washing and drying our first crop of chlorate crystals, uh, this is what we get. Uh, this is 245 grams of sodium chlorate uh, that we got out of our first crystallization of our chlorate solution. Um, we do have a bit of leftover solution that we decanted off the top, which I have gone ahead and boiled down a little bit uh, in order to crystallize out some more crystals. And we have possibly another 60 grams in here. So I will go ahead and um, wash and dry these crystals and add them to our yield. As you can see, to dry the crystals, all I've done uh, is just put them all in a beaker on the hot plate and we're heating them to, I don't know, around 150 Celsius. Uh, what this will do is drive off all of the water from the crystals. This is um, what I did as well for the first batch. Also, uh, while I could probably boil down our remaining solution uh, a little bit more and crystallize out even more sodium chlorate, uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that because um, there's not really all that much left in here, maybe a maximum of 80 grams total. And also, once we start boiling down past this point, uh, there's probably going to be a small amount of sodium chloride crystallizing out uh, as we reduce that volume, which we don't want. So I'm just going to discard this solution and our yield is going to be uh, what we got in the first round and what we have here. And there we go. That is the final yield we're going to get today. This is our sodium chlorate synthesized, purified and thoroughly dried. It took us 16 days to make 315 grams of the stuff, which represents around a 43% yield based on the amount of charge we put through the chlorate cell. Um, if we consider the fact that there's probably around 80 grams of chlorate left in the solution here, um, our electrolytic yield is closer to maybe 55%. But since I won't bother extracting the chlorate out of our solution, um, the 43% yield is what we're left with. Now, as you might have noticed, this obviously wasn't uh, a particularly good guide for building your own sodium chlorate cell um, if you want to do that yourself. I mean, throughout this whole video, I was pretty much making stuff up as we went along. If you do want to make sodium chlorate for yourself, I would strongly encourage you to do a whole bunch of extra research than you know, just watching this video. What I've shown you here is pretty much the simplest sodium chlorate cell uh, that you can possibly run. It gets a whole lot more complicated with additives uh, temperature control and pH control, uh, which will increase the efficiency of your cell quite significantly, uh, but we're never really going to give that a go on this channel. I think our simple cell has given us enough chlorate for a very, very long time. As far as the purity of our product goes, uh, this sodium chlorate should be pure enough for pretty much all purposes. Um, as an oxidizer, it's perfectly good enough. Um, in pyrotechnic mixtures, um, if you need chlorates for some kind of mixture, then this will do perfectly fine. And also you can use sodium chlorate due to its high solubility as a way of getting other chlorates uh, with other metal ions by a double displacement reaction. So say you wanted cesium chlorate, you could dissolve up some sodium chlorate, you could dissolve up some cesium chloride, and then mixing them together, 
you'll get a double displacement reaction where you get cesium chlorate precipitating out. Now there is one use for which um, this degree of purity of our sodium chlorate is not quite good enough and that is as a starting material for a perchlorate cell. If you're running a perchlorate cell, any degree of chloride in your starting material sodium chlorate, um, as we likely have here um, to a small degree, will completely ruin the efficiency of the cell. So if we're making sodium chlorate as a starting material for a perchlorate cell, um, which is actually what this sodium chlorate is for, that's why I made it, we'll be doing perchlorates in a future video once I get the right electrodes, uh, we are going to need to do another recrystallization or two in order to get the right level of purity uh, for a perchlorate cell. And final note, uh, on storage, sodium chlorate is hygroscopic, so if you're going to store it for long periods of time, uh, it's best to do it in a closed container unless you want your sodium chlorate to absorb moisture from the air. Okay, well, with all that said, I think it's time to test our sodium chlorate product. Um, and the best way to do that is, of course, to mix it with some sugar and then burn it to see how well the mixture burns. Um, and I think maybe we will compare uh, the performance of our sodium chlorate to the potassium chlorate uh, we made in our last video on chlorate cells. As you can see here, for both of these mixtures, I've mixed about half sugar and half chlorate salt by weight. Well, there you go. Definitely sodium chlorate made from table salt with an MMO anode and a bit of electricity. The next thing on the agenda, I suppose, is to try out a perchlorate cell using our product here. But that might be a while away. We'll see.